I don't look that old, isn't it? The way he sounds now, Malcolm sounds that like uh, I'm kind of 70 or 80 years old. That. How many years? 50 years anniversary? My goodness. I didn't even know that. <laughs> I was here in 1978, or you rather 77 December. Who were not here yet? You were not born yet, isn't it? Some of them. You were not born yet. Thank you very much. Then I know I'm old, yes. If you want to know how old I am, you ask Dr. Tiong. We are of the same age. <laughs> if you feel that Dr. Tiong is old, then I'm, yeah, I'm the same. Okay. Thank you so much that I have a privilege to come back to share the laws with, with you all. I have not been preaching all these years in English, and I thank you for giving me the opportunity to share God's word with you. Just to fill in the gap after that, not before. <laughs> and I was pastor of First Baptist Church in 1977, December. And then, after about 12 years, and we have formed Grace Baptist Church, that's a Mandarin service. And so I became the pastor of the Grace Baptist Church. That's why I left you, in a way, but I didn't just leave you like that. I, we have a pastor that come on the scene, that's Pastor John Chin. I think some of you still remember him, and, and so on. Then after that, I left Grace Baptist Church and started the Battle Baptist Church. If you want to know where is the Battle Baptist Church, you go to the Chinese section in your church. <laughs> because when I left Kuching, uh, Battle Baptist Church members actually rejoined the First Baptist Church site with the Chinese section. Uh, that's what happened. And I left in 2002. Having been here for 25 years full, and I left until now, it's 20 years already. I don't know you will count I'm more with the Kuching people or with my own hometown. I was in Sandagan, born there, and uh, for 20 years, when I, was t I turned 21, I went to the seminary. So after the seminary training, I came over here and started the ministry here for 25 years. Then I proceeded to move over to KL, now it's about the 20th year, uh, so I think I still spend most of the time in Kuching. Thank you for allowing me to come back and share the Lord's word with you. I may have problem with my tongue in terms of speaking English. In the past many years, I've been teaching in Chinese and I'm ministering to the Chinese people, so seldom speak in English. Why I don't want to serve is a message I would like to bring to you this morning. Have you joined this? Okay, wait, I'll read to you the passage of scripture here in Matthew 25. Verse 14, for the kingdom of heaven is like a man traveling to a far country who call his own servants and deliver his goods to them. And to one he gave five talents and another two and another one to each according to his own ability. And immediately he went on a journey. Then he who had received the five talents went and traded with them and make another five talents. And likewise, he who had received two gained another two more. But he who had received one went and dug in the ground and hid his Lord's money. After a long time, the Lord's of those servants came and settled accounts with them. So he who had received five talents came and brought five other talents saying, Lord, you deliver to me five talents. Look, 
I have gained five more talents besides them. And the Lord said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You were faithful over a few things, and I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of your Lord. He who had received two talents came and said, Lord, you delivered to me two talents. Look, I have gained two more talents besides them. And his Lord said to them, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a few things, and I am going to make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of your Lord. Then he who had received the one talent came and said, Lord, you, I, I knew you to be a hard man, reaping where you have not sown, and gather where you have not scattered seed. And, and I, was, I was afraid, and I went and hid your talent in the ground. Look, there, there you have what is yours. But his Lord answered and said to him, You wicked and lazy servant, you knew that I reap where I have not sown and gather where I have not scattered seed. So you ought to have deposited my money with the bankers, and at my coming I will have received back my own with interest. Therefore, take the talent from him and give it to him who has ten talents. For to one who has, more will be given, and he, who, and he will have abundance but from whom who does not have, even what he has will be taken away. And cast the unprofitable servant into the outer darkness. There will be whipping and gnashing of teeth. Normally when we read passages like that, we always think that I'm the five talents guy and, or the two talents guy. Maybe most of us will think I must be the two talents guy. Am I? Let us pray. Father God, thank you for your goodness. You have been good to us because you have delivered us from sin and given us all, each one of us, eternal life. And we have been bought from sin with the blood of Christ. And yet today, not many of us will take that preciously and respond to you in love and service. May you help us as we look into this passage of Scripture today. Help us, O oh God. Thank you. In Jesus' name. I will look at this Scripture in a different perspective huh, today. Uh, Jesus was taking his last trip into Jerusalem. We all know that. Huh? And then the passage we read, uh, before that, he was talking about the ten virgins, okay? And uh, it's a warning from the Lord that uh, if you are not ready for the second coming of the Lord, you'll be in trouble. And then he talked about these uh, five talents, two talents, and one talent. And it's, it's, it's warning us whether we are actually serving the Lord faithfully. What does it mean, serving the Lord faithfully? We'll deal with that later. And so this is Jesus' last trip into Jerusalem. So he was actually giving warning to the twelve that they are to remain faithful in telling this parable. The reason of the one talent, this was blocked a little bit by that word. <laughs> it's like tail. Uh, actually, it's talent, okay? The reason of the one talent is that he, he has a reason why he had not done what he was supposed to do. He said, Lord, I knew you to be a hard man. Wow. I hope. We all understand this is watch out with our word to the Lord. With the past experiences with the Lord, I feel that I won't dare to say a lot of things nowadays. <laughs> really. Reaping where you have not sown. And gathering where you have not scattered seeds. Oh my, it is blaming the Lord. This is putting the blame on the master. Because you are hard, man. And so I will do 
Two are hard men. That's what I will do. And I was afraid. Okay, talking about this word, I was afraid. I would like to ask you all to think together. Is this man who received that one talent really afraid? What do you think? Was he really afraid? Well, if the child was told, you don't touch it, if you touch it, and I'm going to spank you. If the child is afraid, will he touch it? He probably would like to touch it because curious, isn't it? Very curiosity, you know. Hey, why cannot touch all? Maybe try. But if I touch, I will be punished. So if he's really afraid of the punishment, will he touch it? He won't. But it's out of curiosity. Maybe he would like to try to touch it. But also realizing he will be punished. So was that one talent man, he really feel that he was afraid? Second, what is really easy to bury the one talent? What would be your answer? And I know those of you who are online, you can also discuss if you have it in the family. Huh? Was it really easy to bury that one talent? I was pondering, I feel that it's not easy. If you want to hide your money, you want to bury it. Like, let's say you have a piece of gold or a few pieces of gold. You want to bury the gold. Is it easy to bury the gold? Let's say you really like dig, you, know? you dig, a, dig the ground and then hide it somewhere, you know. Is it easy to bury that? It's never easy because you will firstly think, where should I bury it? Isn't it? You have to think like that. You have to think, should I bury it around my, my house compound or maybe better to be at the church compound? Malcolm will like that, you know. Oh. Now, if you want to bury in the church compound, would you come during the time when the people are around? So you start thinking, isn't it? Right? Is it easy to bury the, the, the one talent? Actually, it's not easy, isn't it? You have to think, you have to give a lot of thoughts to it. So can you see the excuse? Is it easier to bury that one talent or to just take the one talent and give it to the banker? Which one is easier? Give it to the banker easier, isn't it? You don't have to think, you don't have to worry, you don't have to worry anything, you know. You can just do it. You see, when we make excuses, telling our Lord that we cannot serve, we don't want to serve at all, we try to give excuses, will those excuses be accepted? And this man, he did. He said, Lord, I knew you to be a hard man, and I was afraid, and the Lord knows that's all not true. So the Lord came with the reply, then you knew that. You knew it. Pointed out the servant's laziness. You knew it. What you really know, you didn't do. Then he said, unveil his wickedness. Sometimes we have thoughts in our mind when we serve the Lord. Some people serve the Lord with an open heart. Some people serve the Lord with an unwilling heart. Do you do that? I have done that before. Uh, just now, in the introduction, I was also feeling embarrassed because I realized last time when I came here, I would like to start in a church where there is only one language, you know, and then I said to the Lord, because bilingual is very difficult. You serve in a bilingual church is very difficult. And I, when I was in the seminary, the President always asked me to interpret, interpret, you know, interpret on the chapel hour and all this. It's so difficult. And so I say to the Lord, Lord, if I ever go out to, to serve, I want to serve in a, a single language. You know why Kuching Baptist Church, it's also First Baptist Church, uh, now it's changed the name. You know why Kuching Baptist Church employed me or not? Invited me? Because I know Chinese. Because they say English, uh, Kuching Baptist Church at that time was only purely English. And they invited me because they want to start the Chinese section. So I was invited. 
You see, our Lord is so humorous. It started from the very beginning, very humorous. And then at the end, I serve with the Chinese section. So you see, I'm now uh, ministering to mostly the, the Chinese people. You are also Chinese, I understand, okay? Uh, I mean the Chinese-speaking Chinese. <laughs> uh, so I minister to most of them. And so when I serve in two congregations, and then I do the time passed, uh, Dr. Tiong also came, you know. Uh, Malcolm came a bit later, I think. Uh, uh, Dr. Tiong came and then he was, he was joining us in the Chinese section because he had to serve in the morning. So he cannot come to the English section. You think it's easy to serve in two congregations, Malcolm? I got to preach in the morning and preach in the evening and cannot preach the same message. Easy la, is it? You say la, easy la. So whenever I got up to the pulpit, I feel very, very excited about it. Not really. So much so that I didn't do well in my preaching. I even preached wrongly, theologically wrong. And I don't like it also. There were times when I'm sitting down there and it's going to be preaching time already. I really feel that, Lord, I just don't like feeling going up to the pulpit. Do you know this kind of attitude? Who knows? You people don't know, but the Lord knows. The Lord knows. You can say that people like me, you know, in doing as a pastor and serving as pastor and teacher and all this, so we must be the one that receiving the 5,000. And honestly, I have not earned another 5,000. You get it? You get it? Because the one that the praise by the Lord is saying that you are good and faithful servant, but I was not. So the one with the 1,000, it was punished by the servant. Sorry, the thing had moved up there, huh? took the one talent from him, cast him into the outer darkness. That's the punishment. I would like to ponder this, uh, think of this parable in a different way. Think together with me, uh, okay? Now you see that when the first, first the five, ta ta sorry, five talents in the Chinese translation is called 5,000 now. Uh, so more play, I say the 5,000 easier because later on, I want to say it in a way that it will help to understand. The one who received the 5,000 uh, and then the one who also received the 2,000, when they came to the Lord and said, Lord, come, I have made another 5,000 and the other one, I make another 2,000. What kind of word received from the Lord? Check that, the yellow one. The Lord said, well done, good and faithful servant. You were faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of your Lord. I was reading 23. You are reading 21, right? Because it sounds the same. You get that? Now, what if the one who had received the one talent came and said to the Lord, Lord, you delivered to me one talent, 1,000. Look, I have gained another one more besides the one you gave me. What would the Lord have said? What do you think? Will it be something like this? Well done! Good and faithful servant, you have been faithful over a few things and I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of your Lord. Would it be the same? Let's think of this. Actually, this parable is teaching us today quite differently because the time Jesus was warning his disciples as he was going to up to the cross already. And now we are living here, serving God in the church. We already know Christ already sacrificed for us. And now the Lord has entrusted to all of us, each one of us with a different talents, with different wealth. How are we going to serve God? We always admire people who have more, isn't it? Do you know the difference between 5,000 and 2,000? Anybody don't know? 
Just think for a moment. The one is sitting next to you is working in, in another company and you are working in your own company there. Huh? And then the one that was sitting next to you, he received 5,000 monthly and you only received 2,000. Is that a difference? You prefer which company? <laughs> now understand the difference. Huh? Okay. So when, let's think in this way. Okay. What it matters is really the attitude. Okay, the attitude. Firstly, the unhealthy attitude is that the one who received the one talent, he was not happy. He was not happy. It could be that he was not happy, all right? He was not happy for given only one talent. Can you imagine uh, if the Lord is here and then he's giving us, you know, he say, okay, Malcolm, this is how we can, and you take this one. And then you look at other people's one. And then you say, how come, how come he, he got so many? I don't have so many, isn't it? We, sometimes we have that feeling, isn't it? Especially when the parents uh, uh, share things among the children. Uh, I don't want, I don't want, why go and say one less one? We do that. So, not happy to be given only one talent. There are people like that. And then there is also one, well, I don't need the reward. So when we talk about uh, those uh, uh, those two persons who received the 5,000 and the 2,000, and they received the reward, and then some people say that, well, I don't really want that reward. I don't desire the reward, so I don't, I don't do it. Actually, this is another bad attitude. This is wrong altogether. We serve God is not because you don't want the reward. You know that the Lord is going to reward us. You're going to award us with wonderful things. And then we say, well, I don't really want that, so I don't want to serve. You're wrong altogether. We serve is not because we don't want the reward. We serve because Christ has saved us. It's wrong attitude altogether to begin with. You can say you don't want, you, when you serve, you may not even have the reward. And I won't dare to claim my reward. As I look back, really as I look back to my past experiences, I didn't apologize to you. Uh, but on Friday night, when I was having a dinner with some of the Grace members, I apologized to them. I apologized because when I was here, pastoring in the churches here in Kuching, First Baptist, Grace Baptist, Bethel Baptist Church, and also Sri Aman, I, di I didn't do good. I really didn't do good job. I didn't do my, my job nicely. And I really will not dare to make any claim of the 25 years here. I won't, I won't dare to go to the Lord and say, Lord, you see, I have so faithfully serving you in coaching for 25 years. I, I won't dare to mention it, really. As I look back, you know, I really didn't find myself doing a good job. How to claim the reward? I would rather don't, don't mention it now. Don't mention it. I don't need the reward. Not willing to accept one's wrong. Very unhealthy, very unhealthy attitude. Sometimes when we are done wrong, we also will not admit it. You see two children, you know? Two brothers fighting one another, and then uh, it was the elder one bully the young one first, you know. And the parent come along and say, "Who say this? Who do this one first? And then the young one, he, you go go this. And they ask, oh, "Say sorry to your brother." Sorry la. Is that sorry? Was it really a sorry thing? not willing to accept one's wrong. The right attitude is, firstly, we talk about this one talent man is, firstly, you have to admit, only care for your own matter. Lah. How many of us have experienced it or say something like that when the pastor asked us to serve in the church? He said, well, we, we need you, you know, we need you to come and serve in the Lord. Uh, we, we need people to serve in the church. We need people in this area. You say that, hey, pastor, uh, excuse me, uh, I, 
this year I'm pretty tight, you know. Uh, I, uh, I'm quite busy because I just promoted in the company and uh, my, my job demand is very great, you know. And then, uh, so this year I will not be able to serve much uh, in the church. So when we meet things like that, you know what I have to do? I have to pray to the Lord, Lord, take away from him his promotion. We, we always have our excuses, right? I may joke with you here, but let's think carefully. Nah. With those words that we say to our church leadership, that the things that we don't want to get involved too much and all this, think for a moment, my beloved. Think that Jesus come, okay? Jesus finally come. And you now stand right in front of Jesus. Were you able to say the same thing to him? Why you are not willing to serve him? Will you think Jesus will take your word and say that? Oh, yes, I know you are very busy. That's why. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, never mind. It's okay. For you, it's okay. Will you think Jesus will say things like this? Think for a moment. Admit not taking the master's matter seriously. Admit not having done his part. I really have come to the point and realized there are things that I should do, I have not done so. There are things that I have done already. I have done it, okay? But I didn't do it out of a right attitude. I did it just because it's my duty. That's why I didn't do well. Can I claim anything from the Lord? No way. Let's look into the better attitude. Happily accept one's only one talent. I sorry I didn't check my time. Uh, uh, so Brother Malcolm, you remind me. Uh, just like I don't know when I did not know when I started. Huh? Okay, happily accept you have only one talent. What 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 does it what does it mean? Like for example, you know, if the, the Lord is here and then He give uh give us the so called money you know, in the sense of uh, uh, give Malcolm you give five thousand you know and uh, Doctor Tiang five thousand was five thousand and they come down to there and they say they give two thousand. You probably say, hey, why two thousand now? Two thousand and then come to me and give me one thousand. I say, wow. How do you feel? Have you seen people who are very talented? You find the five, four or five, five men here, just now, leading, and then I realized, well, these young men, uh, they were not here when I was here. <laughs> and uh, leading and playing the guitar, singing and all this, you know. Have you ever down there, sitting there, you say that, oh, he is so good, especially girls, lah, huh? Uh, you can play the guitar, you can sing so well, and then later on you put down the guitar, go to the keyboard and start playing. You say, Ooh, can play the, key, the, the piano, uh, the, the keyboard also, you know. After that, you know, there's a change, and then the drummer had to go away, and then he came down there, go to the drum there, and start hitting. He said, Oh, he's so good. He knows everything. Honestly, for those of us, those of us who are given the talents, even the money, it demands more from us. And you don't serve our obligation. You should serve with the right attitude. So if you receive one talent, what can be the right attitude? A good attitude, you say that. Thank God, lah. Wow, God one. How come Doctor Tony ought to do so much? Wow, and then the brother they stand up, oh they get two thousand, they have to do so much. I get only one thousand, I thought they do so much. Oh, wow, easy. Easy job for me. It is a nice thing, you know. And then you just, just happily receive one thousand, I don't have to do too much. Isn't it? Then think thankful for not being given heavy duties. You know, those of you who are light given a small amount, you don't have to be responsible for more. You think it's easy uh, to sit on the church committee, you know, and I know next week you're having the business meeting, right? I should come back for the, for the lunch because today no lunch provided. 
So you see, uh, is it easy to be the leaders of the church? And before you can come to the church business meeting, what the leaders are supposed to do? Meetings. Getting reports done, you know, sharing together and all this, and they, they have to spend more time with that. And if you receive less, okay, you come, huh? you are a member of the church, huh? so easy, right? You get a 1,000? So I'm so happy. <laughs> I don't have to do so much. I just come to attend and got lunch some more. Yeah, no. Very nice attitude, isn't it? Thirdly, willing to do more than is required. Many of us are very good in calculating. It's when we do things, you know. Now, this is not my responsibility. Huh? I don't do. Like, the one is out of my territory. Huh? So we do calculation like that, isn't it? I hope you are not. What does it mean by willing to do more than it is required? Uh, I would like to share always this, uh, uh, this story, huh? which is a true story. When I first accepted the Lord in 1972, I joined the church and joined the youth. I always enjoyed the youth fellowship. And this Sanagan Baptist Church had the youth fellowship in such a way that they have always run by a committee. This committee will be re-elected every three months. And then the committee will have, it's all by young people, huh? They have the chairman, the secretary, the uh, treasurer, the program leader, and the game leader, and also the refreshment leader. This one time we let this uh, brother, uh, his brother Chung anyway, huh? but it's not Thomas Chung. Huh? <laughs> this brother, he, he became the refreshment leader. And out of that period, for the three months, we almost every Saturday, we got surprised. And this brother is not a sister, mind you, he's a brother. He always makes very nice refreshment. He was willing to spend time to do the cooking in the afternoon. Make it so nice and delicious. Well, last night I was here for the youth fellowship. They just two bottles of drink, cola, 100 plus, and then three or four packets of this, uh, what's that? The crispy things, what they call it? Cracker and all this. Is it easy? It's easy. How? Refreshment, ma. I'm responsible, ma. go and buy. La. Have I done my job? Yes. Now listen carefully, huh? Yes, you have done your job by preparing and buying this. But willing to go the second mile and even more than second mile and think about what is nice. How much time we bought, never mind. As long as to make the refreshment nice. When people come for the refreshment, look at it. Wow, I like to see that. So every Saturday night, this brother will prepare something nice. He is like given uh, uh, 1,000. But what he has gained? He has gained 1,005. Understand? Uh? He has gained another, not 1,000, 1,005. So he has together 2,005. That's what I call the willing to do more than it is required. Yes, pre prepare it. Refreshment is, seems to be a, a simple job, isn't it? A lot of mothers can easily do it. Go to the market and buy a little bit more. Lah. No, that's it. But giving thought to it, think about it, make surprises for our brothers and sisters and spend time to prepare the refreshment and bring it in and then get a cup and everything ready and refreshment and everybody come. Ooh! And that job, they had done more than the 1,000. What would you think if in the parable, the one with the 5,000 and 2,000 came with the same, un same answer and response, but the last one came with this, Lord, you have given me 1,000. Now here I earn 1,005. What do you think the Lord will say?
Sad to say the other way. There are people who have the 5,000 and the 2,000 today will take it as for granted. My job is only up to here. Don't expect me to do more. Isn't it? I don't know how you have been serving the Lord here in the church, but I do know one thing. Time is running short. How many of you have been affected because of the pandemic? Who has not been affected at all? You know why there are so many empty seats here? Because they are somewhere online. Hi, you can see me, right? <laughs> ah, they can hear me, you right? know? Ah. So they are up online, you know, I know. You see, we are all affected, right? Some people are afraid to come in contact with people. Do you know, do you know that? Are you afraid or not? You come in contact with other people at the time, huh? you, you, you feel, don't know this, this man uh, what, coughing some more. Uh, uh. So you want to go near or not? You, we are all affected. Some of our people were even affected to the extent that they lost their job. They cannot pay the loan. They have to return. They lost their house and all this. Many people are affected. You know what that is it sound or not? The Lord is near. Beloved, you still have the chance. You still have the chance. Please grab this opportunity and do it right. Do it fast. Uh, this pandemic has actually warned me very readily. So I want to teach. I'm, I'm teaching online, okay? Uh, teaching the Bible stuff. Huh? Uh, anyway, uh, just for your information, I'm, whenever I got opportunity to teach online, I'll do it. Uh, the reason is I, I don't have much time left already. Do you know our church, our Baptist group, uh, in a sense, is very much affected in Malaysia when this COVID thing came in? Do you know the first person who died in Malaysia? Pastor David Chang. And Pastor David Chang is the member, the co-worker in Emmanuel Baptist Church, right here in Kuching. I knew him for over 40 years. When I first came, I met him already. And a few years back, he, David, myself, and Pastor Pili were laying our hands on Pastor James in Bindulu, Calvary Baptist Church, and ordaining Pastor James, and two years after that, Pastor David was taken. Whenever I look at the pictures, I say, Lord, there were three of us here, and you took him. You left me behind. Now what I'm supposed to do? Beloved, you are still here. What are you supposed to do? You still have chance. When you come to the Lord, what you would like the Lord to do to you? If you have been faithful serving, I will like say, keep it up, brothers. Oh, okay, sisters also, huh? Brother and sister, keep it up. If you have been serving and you have been happily serving, but if you have not been happily serving, okay, you feel bored. I don't know how many of you are, I'm speaking especially those who are serving, you know, uh, in the morning. But the English group is okay, like you only worship at 11 o'clock, right? Is it 11? 10.30. Oh, 10.30, uh, you start. Uh, you only worship at 10.30, you can sleep quite late in the morning, right? How many of you, uh, if you come uh, early, like a Chinese section, you know, this, they start at 8.30, I tell you, a lot of brother and sister doesn't like it. A lot of Christians doesn't like it. I was once served in the church. They got two congregations, the English and the Chinese. 
And then we always have this problem of uh, in between a lot of transition time. And sometimes we invite a speaker, the speaker speaking a bit longer in the early service. So it drag on a bit later. Then the English group already coming in, you know, they are coming in already. So we have to get, get ready, you know, immediately it, it stopped. The last prayer, whoa, so everybody ran away, you know. Then the English group will come in. That church, so I was suggesting to the Chinese section. Uh, since we start the worship at nine o'clock, okay, it was in the morning, nine o'clock. And then I said, can we tune it a bit earlier to 8.30? You know, when I suggested that, uh, I, I was almost crucified, you know. I tell you, I won't dare to propose things like that anymore. We want comfort. How many of you are dragging yourself into the church this morning? Well, those of you who are not here, you're online, right? Hi. <laughs> I have a word for you. <laughs> I have a word for you also. How many of you actually take the last minute to get up from bed? to prepare yourself to worship God and turn on your TV or turn on your computer or turn on your handphone, then you start. Uh, and then you start to worship. How many of you do that? I would like to give you another word too. How many of you actually are wearing your pajamas at home and worshiping? You may say, Pastor Leong, not too much. Uh, don't say too much. Uh. But I really will honestly, I want to ask you, are we coming to worship God? Are we? Okay, you can stay back home. But my question to you is, you stay back home to worship whom? You worship God, right? So we dress up nicely, it's because we want people to see, or dress up nicely because I want to meet God. It's a method of attitude, isn't it? You see, we all mix up, you know. We all mess up. We, we thought dressing nicely to come to church is a sure thing. But dressing up nicely to worship God at home is not necessary. That means our dressing up is for people to see only. So are we worshiping God or we are worshiping people? Good thought, isn't it? Think for a moment. Whenever we want to come to the Lord, how we behave, how we prepare ourselves. Isn't that important? Now, I may hurt some of you, but I'd like to say this word to you because you still have time to change. You know, if your attitude change, from now on, the Lord will be very pleased to see you well prepare yourself, uh, getting ready, you know, even at home, you know, you're getting ready yourself and because you want to worship God. I hope your attitude is correct. And that is also service, you know, serving the Lord. I hope you know what, what I mean. Have you never involved in service? Start now. If you have not joined in any service in the church, start now, my beloved, before it's too late. Look for the church pastor. Arrange a place of service. Do you know your church pastor? By the way, may I recommend and introduce to you Pastor Malcolm Young. <laughs> he introduced me and I introduced to you. Okay. Just uh, go to him, he'll be very happy to know that you would like to serve God. No matter how big or how small. And I believe God give us the talents that we have and give us the wealth that we have and give us the time. And if you want to spend it and spend it for the Lord and use it for God's glory, Jesus knows. I find very sad I, in my past, pastoral work, when I ask some members, I say, well, can you 
join in serving next year. We are looking for people to serve the Lord. Uh, can you serve the Lord next year in this post? He said, oh, yeah, Pastor, la. Can I, you know, I'm quite busy, you know. Uh, I think next year cannot, la, cannot. La. Uh, wait and see, la. wait and see. Uh, sometimes I, some members ask, oh, can you help to serve in this area? He said, oh, yeah, Pastor, I'm not so sure yet, you know. I'm not so sure whether I have time or not. La, let's wait and see, huh? uh, see first, huh? see first. I, I don't know how we serve God. What is your attitude of serving God? Is it you want to serve God because you have left time? You have some time left? That's you serve God? Think for a moment. Attitude. is attitude. You only can serve God after you have finished all your work, your own things, and you have time left, and then you can serve God. Never until retirement, no? isn't it? Is that the attitude we have? And then offering. Uh, our church needs some more money, you know. We, we need to do this project, this pandemic. We need to help those people who are poor and all this. Uh, and members, you know, give, give a bit more, you know, give a bit more. He said, Pastor Cephas, see whether I still have some leftover. Are we offering, giving to the Lord when we have leftover? And I know there are some pastors who won't dare to preach about one-tenth you know, of giving. Uh, some members also feel that, hey, oh, Today, uh, we don't talk about 110, and we talk about the willing of the heart, you see. Pastor, as long as I'm willing to give, it's good enough, you know. So how you give? See, lah. See how much more money I left. You think our Lord so need your money, so much, without your giving, our Lord cannot survive. In fact, when God invites us to serve, when God invites us to give, God is giving us the opportunity to respond to His love that He had firstly expressed in the Lord Jesus Christ. Isn't that? Jesus has already died for you and me on the cross to give us eternal life. So what is our money? What is our time? What is our talent? It's supposed to serve the Lord. So were you willing to come and say, that, well, in this time, this year, I want to serve God. I want to give time to the Lord first. I thank God for this brother who has given an opportunity for two job choice, you know, two choices when I was serving in the Kuching Baptist Church. Then he shared with me the two choices. One is well paid, very high, but almost double of the other one. I said to him, he said, then you take the one. Ah. Sure, I said, no, I cannot take the one. I said, why? Because he said, because that job want me to serve also to work on Sunday. I said, Lord, bless him. Bless him. How about you, beloved? May the Lord bless you too. May God help us. Let us pray. Father God, thank you. Thank you for loving us. Not because we are worthy. It's because your love is so unconditional. You love us just the same. No matter what we have done, you love each one of us. And those of us who are here in this worship have been saved by our Lord Jesus Christ and given us this eternal life. And so it is out of this gratitude that we should serve you without any reservation. Help us, O oh God, to have this right attitude in serving you. No matter we are receiving the five talents, two talents, 
or even one talent. May you use us, O oh God. May you speak to each one of us. I commit to you, Lord, my beloved ones here. May the Lord you bless us. Give us, give us opportunity so that when we see you face to face, we will be happily come before you and give an account of what we have done. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Pastor James Leong.